Hello and welcome to Talking with Famous People. I'm host Eric. I'm here with famous person Ayer, host Ken. I'm with LC from Horseland, famous person LC, famous person Nandi in the house. I haven't seen Nandi in a couple of days. Uh, yep. The famous person Hayden and famous ENTP Tim. Uh, as well is here, and I have got a topic that I made some notes on because I want to talk about it, but I got too sleepy that before I actually made the video, so maybe we can make it right now. And the topic is enthusiasm. I made a car video telling a story about this nationals, where I had a kid who competed and won the national championship at the nationals, and it was very enthusiasm laden life narrative for me, so it made a good example. Now. This, I want to talk about it more abstractly, not about any personal stories, but rather how enthusiasm works in relation to judging cognitive functions. So, first of all, I would like to say that um, enthusiasm is fundamentally equal to some at least sliver of self-wellness or self-acceptance because to be enthusiastic means that you have accepted the burden and the risk of taking chances in order to hope to attain better than currently exists. So I encountered this lack of acceptance of the burden of risk that is necessary to be a functionally and meaningfully human person moving about the world doing shit, you know, and taking, you know, understanding that I'm going to a situation where I'm going to be the worst one at this. Well, Maybe tomorrow will be second worst. That is self-esteem. It is believing that in yourself and that your belief in yourself is going to persist beyond the duration of the evidence to the contrary. It's faith. Um, the second thing to think about in terms of enthusiasm is this issue of risk assessment. When we're talking about risk assessment, when we're talking about evaluating on According to the three kinds of evaluatory mechanisms we have, the three kinds of cognition that impact our decision making, those being abstract, which correlate with the T functions, T, E, and T, I, uh, animal or physical, which correlate with the F functions, F, E, and F, I, and unconscious, which is to say a lot of our decision making is impacted by things that we have no conscious control over. As a great example, uh, that Zachary once used, if I ask you to name three movies, you might think of five or six and then choose which three to name. But you don't choose which five or six you think of. So in that regard, we understand that unconscious frame generating things like that are necessarily a huge part of our decision making process. And they are mitigated or modified by the abstract in words and images. If you're like an NI person like Mega Bro, you might abstract more in terms of images or pictures. If you're any person like me or just tend to be word oriented like me, you abstract probably in words. Um, those kind of abstractions remove oneself from the physical world and place oneself concurrently in the metaphysical world in a big picture sense. But in any given moment, only in one of those two worlds do you exist. So I'm either feeling enthusiastic for the metaphysical implications of a given thing or I'm feeling enthusiastic for the physical implications of things. I, in other words, I'm feeling enthusiastic because I'm thinking about the likely outcomes, or I'm feeling enthusiastic because I am feeling the immediate, short-term emotional satisfaction of a thing. Now, those three distinctions, abstract, unconscious, and animal or physical, are the most basic kind of level of taxonomy. It should be noted that only through abstract decision-making processes can we actually make our communi communications fungible. That is to say, my idea about why this is good or that is bad is only really meaningfully expressed to others through the abstract realm, which is where we do all of our talking and, and stuff like that. Although there are some means of doing that. If somebody runs up and hugs you to make you feel better, that would be not abstract, obviously. Okay, so um, the, thing to take, the thing to take away from this is the, in, in the unconscious area is that these are the internalized, normal, normalized, paradigms that we accept as a starting point, as our framework that we don't question. It's like the water that we're the fish swimming in. We don't realize we're swimming in water, it's just everywhere all around us. When we metacognate a whole bunch, we start to be able to remove ourselves from the 
uh, servitude of those internalized, normalized paradigms. So, and number three, regarding this abstract or words-based or T-based uh, judgment mechanism, when we are trying to decide whether we should feel enthusiastic, scared, bored, horrified, or whatever in response to something, uh, we ex assess the risk of something, whether we ought to take the chance of being enthusiastic by using cognitive functions. So I think, so let's look at this one here. Uh, basically, in the abstract, we do comparisons against things. We might compare against a model, like, well, that doesn't agree with my negative rights framework. We might compare against the status quo, but that's worse than the way things are right now. We might compare against the desired response. But in my ideal, it goes like this. We might compare against alternatives. Well, but Joe's presented a better option than that. We might compare against the past. It used to be better. All these different kinds of comparison mechanisms that we do are almost all T, except FE does a whole array of social comparisons that T people don't typically think are particularly logical or as relevant. When you have feelings, there are two kinds of feelings. You can get physical pain or you can get heart pain. Oh, it's muted. What happened? Physical pain or heart pain, okay? In both these instances, in the abstractions and the feelings, what are we actually doing in the judging? We're establishing causal relationships. When you say, I don't like that guy, what you're saying is, I've deduced with my feelings a causal relationship between him being around and me not feeling very good. So basically, that's what the judging functions are doing, establishing these causal relationships. Thus, is a process of risk assessment. And it's only through accurately assessing risk and being honest with ourselves about how vulnerable we are, about whether it's of use for us to choose to be that vulnerable, about how much we can choose our level of vulnerability, whether we can or not, or how much we can, it varies between people, right? If we're honest with all our, that, that kind of a shit, then um, we should have a better sense, ultimately, of what we want to do. People, I don't think people in general, including me, really know what they actually want. So, um, I made a list here of things that people want. People want to be heard and understood. People want to attain significant impact. People want to achieve resolution of a problem. Like, let's put that to bed. People want consistency. Let's do it the same way. People want persistence. Let's keep trying even though it's failing. People want self-punishment. I want justice when I fuck up. I'm going to yell at myself and tell myself what a fucking loser I am. People want self-assessment. It's objective. Look, Eric, you're not a fucking loser. You're... You did mess up, but you're not a bad person. People want one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of like juice. Like, oh, baby, baby, I love you so much. You're the woman of my dreams. And oh, 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 husband, man, person. You likewise <laughs> are equivalently valuable to me. <laughs> like that kind of talk, right? Uh, people want caregiving. People want to give care. People want to be taken care of as well. But people want to give care. That's I get my needs filled in that area with my animals. And people want to initiate projects, and people want to complete shit. And there's a different needs. You need to have a little bit of all this shit in your life. You need to have the capacity to be a big spender, and you need to have the, the sense of satisfaction of being frugal and not spending money. And lastly, of course, you need achievement. And that's a big one. And um, before I go on to the last page, I only have one more page on my notes. I tore through that quickly. I did it because I wanted to make sure everybody else had a chance to talk about anything they heard that they either wanted to comment on, riff off of, or whatever. Uh, this is the last page. Before I go on to the last page, uh, let's open the floor. Any other, anybody else have any thoughts on those notions? I will in a month after I've digested everything. <laughs> the same thought. I <laughs> well... That's a digest. How about somebody who's not on camera? Anybody not on camera? Elsie's feeling way too shy today. Are you being? Is that a joke? Are you being like super meta and making that joke or what? <laughs> um, regardless, uh, let me ask you some questions then about enthusiasm. Uh, I, you seem at the very least. I think a lot of people would have any experienced as much of you as I have, which is about 10 minutes or so, um, a lot of people probably say, from that 10 minute experience, you're an enthusiastic person. Would you self-identify yeah. as one? Um, I've learned to be more enthusiastic 
I learned. It has been a slow process, but I'm 21 now. It's been a process over maybe like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I would say I'm expressive. I wouldn't say, yeah, I have no idea how to define it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I don't really know myself that well, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not sure how to measure enthusiasm, like, in myself. So a lot of times I could be, maybe I'm realistic. So when I feel negative, I do say that I'm feeling, I'm feeling that way. And sometimes when you're in bad situations and you tell people they don't accept it or they think you're a negative person, some people just want to hear happy stuff. So in that aspect, I wouldn't say I'm that enthusiastic, but uh, in other ways, okay, yeah, I'll just, I'll just tell myself, yeah, I'm enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm enthusiastic enough, I guess. Yeah. ESFP or what? Pardon? Do you know what your type Who? is? Do you know your type? I'm INTP with an ESFJ mother. So I'm... I think you're an E though. I think you're, huh, a lot more, I think you're a lot more likely to be an ENTP than an INTP. I'm INTP. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. I've been through it all. Like <laughs> I've been through it all, and maybe it's because I've um, analyzed myself so much, so so much, um, in um, a short amount of time. I feel like. I was able to change. I think when you know yourself, you are able to actually change the things that you don't like about yourself or even adapt. But when you don't know yourself, you feel like adapting is sort of losing who you are. But I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, sure. But um, it reminds me of yeah. when I decided to grow a beard. I didn't like my non-beardedness. And so, I changed the way I was. Yeah. And that's one to grow yeah. for everyone. Yeah. That was about 25 yeah. years ago. And now mm -hmm. it's permanent. If you leave it on long enough, it becomes permanent. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, it's gosh. Like, it's like petrified. Yeah. Bread. Not exactly what I was talking about, but... <laughs> But fair enough. But extremely yeah. close to what you were talking about. ENTP, yeah. ENTP Tim, do you have any thoughts on enthusiasm? Now, as an ENTP, yeah. I I order you to be enthusiastic. <laughs> the ENTPs are allowed to give each other orders at random. The other ENTP doesn't have to follow it, but, you know. <laughs> I, I want ENTP, oh, ENTPs to all ascribe to some secret uh secret list of bylaws that they all break all the time <laughs> uh, gosh the only thing that oh sorry to butt in but yeah the only right. thing that kind of okay yeah the only thing that um surprised me when i read the intp description was um the first time i read it and identified with basically everything and then I looked for the community online on YouTube, and I saw stuff about INTPs being um, so smart and INTPs being... Okay, I analyzed everything, but a lot of the stereotypes were that INTPs are geniuses. And I was just thinking, that's nice for my ego and everything, <laughs> but I'm not a genius, and I'm not that smart. Like. I'm just good enough. Like, I try. Why? I think I try. Why do you think you're an INTP? I, I'm, I'm Why? Not, I'm not disagreeing with your assessment. Oh no, it's cool. It's cool. All, all, all those, uh, all mm -hmm. those type yeah. descriptions are ridiculous. ENTP type descriptions yeah. are the most ridiculous. They make us sound at. They make us sound like we, you know, solve. Uh, and I just go out to lunch and solve cancer or something. I can barely. I can barely keep track of my bills. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> I get you. So, but, yeah, um, those descriptions mm -hmm. aren't bad. But why are you so convinced you're an INTP? 
Uh, okay. Um, I would say, let me try and describe. I'd say I'm an INTP because I identify with, first of all, I identify with all the functions, TI, NE, SI, FE, all the, all the functions, I, I really identify with them. And um, when I was in secondary school, maybe that's as far as back as I can go, but when I was in secondary school, I was kind of the weird one. Um, and um, yeah, I, I just used, I just, I used MBTI to describe, my, um, to explain the experience I had in secondary school because um, I felt like I was one of the only intuitive people in my secondary school and there were a lot of ESFJs. There was a lot of there's a lot of FE that um, Nigeria as a country it has a lot of FE. It's very religious. It's um it's very you have to conform a lot of the times. Um, you have to be happy and especially because my mom is an ESFJ. I just know that we're completely opposites and. The experiences I've had in life tell me that um, this is because she's an ESFJ and I'm an INTP. She's always wanted me to be. All right, hey, listen. I'm, I'm, hey, hold going? on, stop. Yeah, I'm, I'm already sold your yeah. in. Okay, just listen to you what? talk. Listen to you talk. I don't know how to explain it. Like, higher, it's higher, only one. Listen, listen. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm, I'm already I'm convinced listening. you are an N. When you said that you grew up in a community full of S's and felt the distinction yeah. against the other S's. Now, yeah. Now, N's and S's both are going to yeah. manifest distinct Two. qualities according to the nature of the community in which they manifest. But that convinced me along yeah. with your, as well as your fluid, your fluid speaking, the fact that you, you're able to move through shit mm -hmm. quickly. You probably mm -hmm. are an N and you probably yeah. do additionally have N E. But mm -hmm. that, I'm still not convinced you're an INTP. Because what, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it to you. Like, like, okay, IR, okay. IR, ENTP has the okay. same exact cognitive function stack, right? Except yeah. in a different order. Mm -hmm. okay, with with yeah. ENTP, we have NE first. Why are you so convinced you're TI before you're NE? Because um, I analyze stuff a lot. And um, when I, I believe I did go through a TISI loop at a point in my life where I just kept on um analyzing things and analyzing the past and not really not really experiencing anything new um for a long time uh i wasn't really sure what what kind of person i was because of that um until i met a girl who was an entp and from that point I don't know because she was so much like me. I didn't really have to adapt that much. That's what I saw something in her that was like me, and then I felt I don't know. It's just so weird, but I just feel she kind of helped my ne to develop. All right. Well, look. But, yeah. There are there are ti heavy subtypes of ENTPs. There are n heavy subtypes of ENTPs. All right. Mm -hmm. It's quite possible you're a T heavy subtype of an ENTP. The reason I have, I'm struggling to accept this that. INTP. The reason I'm struggling to accept this INTP thing, and granted, <laughs> it's, up, it's you're totally you determine that yeah. it's your identity. I'm not trying to say you're wrong. Yeah, I know. I'm I know. Just trying I know. to argue my position here, which is yeah, I, I understand. And and I also know I've seen INTPs spit fine. I mean, like you see it. I have mm -hmm. INTP debaters. They get up there and they're super yeah. extroverted seeming. The thing yeah. is, though, I suspect that you've mistaken very mm -hmm. active analytical processes to mean mm -hmm. that you are a TI dom. Yeah. I think you'd agree that I engage in very active mm -hmm. analytical processes mm -hmm. all the time, but I'm not a yeah. TI dom. I understand. I understand. But, um, yeah, I've looked through it again and again. I'm very, 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 very okay. sure I'm T.I. Don't. You can be as convinced as you want, and that's yeah. great. What I'm saying yeah. is, 
telling me that don't don't worry about it. I, I know for sure that's non responsive. <laughs> You're not answering any of my points, right? Okay, the thing is, I don't know. You know, the answer is you don't fucking know because you're an NE. Dummy. I don't know how to. Out. The thing is, I know. The thing is, I don't know. I'm very, very bad at explaining things to other people. I'm very oh, bad yeah. at explaining what is. You're Pardon? bad at understanding your own nature because you're an ENTP. That's what you're bad at. You, you might just be an ENTP in denial, in, w in which I'm case not... you need to change your name from Ira to Ironic. I wish... <laughs> yeah, I wish I was an ENTP. I, it's funny how I actually aspire to be an ENTP for a while. Like, once I met my ENTP friend, I just felt like, oh, my days... I just want to be an ENTP because it just seems like they just um, got with the flow much easier than an INTP would. I remember um, like the times I spent with my friend, um, I thought we were really alike until we started interacting with other people. There'd be some people that I would never really get on with and she would. And I just found that very strange. I just realized that She's more of, um, she just knows how to, I don't know, maybe it's because she's an extrovert. She just knows how to flow with people much easier than I do. And my friend, I, I would say she knows how to be fake. I'm faker than I can be. Like, I'm not a funny anyone or anything, but... She I, just knows how. To, she knows how to manipulate people. INTPs she knows how to manipulate. She knows how to get what she wants. INTPs Pardon? are way faker. INTPs are I way faker. What? <laughs> That's sure. a lie. No, it's completely true. Because here's the thing. Look, so INTPs are locked in a state of mistake avoidance. They're they're engaged. Uh, in, what? They're they're engaged. They're locked in a state of mistake avoidance. They will always err on the side of double checking the judgment on something before taking the action as a consequence everything is vetted and constructed that you see now they're very smart so what's constructed Shit. is likable That's and what cute. you see is polished you don't see much because they don't have Shit. time to devote yeah. a whole lot of attention to polishing up a whole, right. a whole shitload of uh, tools of fe to just throw around right <laughs> but ENTPs. We, You're right. We've already revealed everything before we, we stopped to think, wait, wait, what should I say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. I understand that. And I've tried to be more like that. I feel like I am more like that because, yeah, I've just seen a lot of mistakes in my thinking before. I just, I used to... I used to want everything to be logical. I realized that now, this was about two years ago. I think I'm very different from then. But I just used to want everything to fit in a box. And that didn't, that didn't work out for me at all. At all. So all right, I did ask this question. Mm -hmm. ENTPs yeah. have an easy time starting projects and have a hard time finishing them. INTPs mm -hmm. have a hard time starting projects and have a hard time finishing them. Which yeah. are you? I'm an INTP. <laughs> you're lazy. You got INTP laziness disorder. You have SE in the seventh slot. Is that what you're telling me? Because we're what? fucking lazy. Uh, am I what? INTPs are lazy as hell too. Don't get me wrong. Just yeah. Like, I I know INTPs are lazy. <laughs> I know. I know. Because are you INTP lazy or are you INTP lazy? INTP lazy is like, well, I just don't know enough yet to start this thing. ENTP lazy is like, eh, eh. that's it. Uh, that's it. It's just um, I would say I don't know enough to start. I sometimes I feel scared to start because I don't. I feel like I should know more, but yeah, I don't just feel. Yeah, I just feel like I should know more before I actually start my project. But then I never, I, I never know enough. So I can hardly actually start. So, and then I start last minute. Well, that's the life story of my uni experience, at least. You're a last minute yeah. doer, huh? Yeah. You're a captain I'm trying to change that this year. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that this year. I just started uni, but yeah, I have to change that that bad habit. 
Uh, but, but, uh, here, here's hold on. Go ahead, my bad. Here's a question. Um, have you ever considered ISTP? Um, my brother's an ISTP. I really like ISTPs. Well, I like my brother at least. I don't like all ISTPs, but um, I'm sure I'm not because I'm really clumsy. Today I went to. I tried a tennis taster session in my uni, and it was awkward times ten. <laughs> I am not. I am not, and I. There's no way in hell. Like I wish I could be. It's cool. I was, I was just asking. I'm just. I'm just asking if you. I know. I know. I know. Where are cool. your traps? Hi, Elsie. Pardon? Um. So anyway, uh, the point is, okay. It sounds like maybe you are. You do seem to correlate with certain ISP things. The procrastination thing eliminates ISTP. They're not procrastinators. Um, yeah. I, the other thing is, there's a certain kind of INFJ who acts a lot like an ENTP, and who is oh, the hardest I... kind to get. Who is the hardest kind for me to type? And it kills kids in example. Sorry. But I've seen others who are even more ENTP ash, like um, yeah, I've seen that. Like uh, fucking Brooks from up north, Stephen Brooks, my debate coach friend. Uh, I, I could have sworn he was an ENTP until I really sat down and talked with him. And then he, <laughs> he told me he was an INFJ. I was like, okay, I see that. So yeah. That's it's funny. Thing. On YouTube, I did that. I didn't. That's funny because on YouTube, I was just like doing my daily like obsession with MBTI. And I came across a. And she did a video on INTPs, and I was like, I just commented, oh my gosh, I love ENTPs, because I was so sure she was an ENTP. And then, like, a few videos later, she was just talking about INFJ stuff and what INFJs do and how she's an INFJ. I was like, what? I thought you were an ENTP. So, and she was like, oh no, she just, she gets that a lot. And it's different when she's, um, outside with other people or whatnot. So I get that, but I'm not an INFJ. I don't, I'm not good with Effie in general. I've had a lot of problems with my social life because of that. So I just don't know how to nav navigate um, social, the social scene. And it's my mom, he's an ESFJ, his, who has always pushed me always pushed me to try and get along with people. And at that point, it almost broke me because I just wasn't like that. And I almost had a breakdown at some point because my mom, I don't think I can actually explain the extent to which she pushed me, but my mom is a social butterfly. So, yeah, I'm just going to stop there and not go on a tangent. But, yeah, you get what I mean. I like your headphones, Elsie. Those are cool. I like that uh, blue. I just don't your fur covered too. Like you're wearing earmuffs, you know? I like that. Elsie, were you the one that uh, left the comment on the GTM video that I put up yesterday? I thought it was you. Someone, like, you made a comment that was like, ah, oh, I missed it by like five minutes. Who? Or who? Was that someone else? Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. that, well, guess what? You're the reason why I made this one earlier, because I felt bad. I was like, ah, I started that one too late. Oh, how's Ken? Oh, I'm getting the better of Oh, let me see it now. What do you mean getting the better of me? It's like a creative block. It's not like it got the better. It's not like it snuck up. That's supposedly how I'm supposed to be operating. I forgot what we were talking about. We are talking about enthusiasm, right? And I got sidetracked... Uh, Arguing with Ayer about her her nature, she's like, "Hi, I'm Ayer. No, it's not. My name's whatever." <laughs> no, it's Actually, not I think it was Ayer. Was that Ava? Uh, I want to go to my last page though. Okay, true. I know Essie doesn't mean you aren't clumsy. I have an ISFP friend, kind of clumsy, Thank but you. yeah, I I don't um, I don't know. I just don't identify with Essie at all. I just don't. I don't even know how to talk in an S E way. Like, it's all about doing stuff and activities and I don't know yeah I just I just don't yeah I'm just not an SC but yeah okay that so, was just me looking at the messages I'm looking at ENTP Tim's thing <coughs> first, first he's feeling somebody and then slightly off topic but to bring it back 
Nah, I don't know. Oh. Ah, I agree with most of what you said, Eric. Enthusiasm towards understanding is what partially led me to become enthusiastic or excited about not being dead, or at least having one of my warts, my warts removed. One of my wants fulfilled. Not one of your warts removed. For a second there, ATP Tim, I thought that your enthusiasm for learning had finally gotten you to get one of your warts removed. Uh, but anyway, I could ask for more, but I don't and shouldn't. Hmm. It depends what you're more of what, I suppose. Hi, light bulb. Uh, so, I think, JC, you are correct. I'm still going with my theory now. I, I will not, however, bow you. I'm not going to bow you, Ire. If I were to bow you, that means every time What's you come that you here. What's that mean? <laughs> to bow you means every time you come here, I go, no, Bo, you're not an INTP. You're a fucking INTP. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was almost I was almost gonna say, you know, there's there's differences in the personality, obviously, and one's a guy and one's a girl, but she kinda reminded me of Bo. Just in your interactions. I guess you Bo. I'm gonna Bo like, you though. Bo yeah. is a guy who comes here who says he's an INTP that I have said to him many times, No, you're not, you're an INTP. And I with him, <laughs> I, with, with you, I I'm not trying to say you're an INTP. With yeah. Him, with he, for me, with him, he has exerted yeah. Immense amounts of spiritual energy trying to convince me that he's an INTP. <laughs> Which right there proves he's an ENTP. Only an ENTP uh, would do something uh, that stupid. Uh, okay. <laughs> Regions of enthusiasm. Um, oh yeah, the last page. Mm. Being liked, accepted, needed, and wanted includes different kinds of rewards. Affirmation is like an FE reward. Power is like a TE reward. Status is an FE reward. And oil the gears is an FE reward. But there's also FI rewards, like feeling secure in one's metaphysical world, knowing that you that one has people around oneself who care and will look out for you, even if you don't feel like you're in any danger. In other words, identifying with these things that yeah I, I can be heard and understood yep i can attain significant impacts yeah i can resolve problems or i can fight them i need both i have to have both i think everybody has all of these needs either a little teeny bit or a medium bit or a huge amount right and some people really super prioritize one to the expense of others and sometimes not so much sometimes it's more spread out but everybody has a need for things to be consistent, and yet everything, all everybody else has a need for there to be persistence, which is uh, facing, you know, persisting in the face of failure. And but they also have a need to experience some quick and easy successes. It's like all this shit, right? And so at the end of the day, you, nobody gets to have all of these needs fulfilled exactly the extent that they want, and nobody needs to have all these needs fulfilled exactly the extent that they want. But everybody has to have some of these needs fulfilled. And the extent to which they have more of these needs fulfilled broadens the extent to which they can define themselves as a more expansive identity in space and time. And that concludes my speech on enthusiasm. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Applause. I think that's a good time to stop this video as well and we'll move on to the next topic. And uh, stop recording now. Thanks for watching.